Hello, everyone. This is Derek. You can hear me okay? Yep. Yes, sir. You know, okay. All right. I'm ready to turn it over to Coach. You can do a review from uh, Saturday for you and then take your questions on IUPUI. Um, you know, obviously, Saturday, I thought we took a, a step in the right direction, um, especially defensively, and, you know, defending a really, really, you know, really good team, good offensive team, athletic. Um, you know, skilled. I thought I thought that was a great test for our defense, and um, it's the best we played defensively. And I thought it started really with our mindset, the way we had practice. Um, you know, we were we had an edge to us, and uh, I thought that was evident throughout the 40 minutes. I thought the <clears throat> the best thing was the resiliency that we showed. We got down early, missed some really good shots. We just didn't make them, and then fought to take a 10 point lead, and then. They hit us again to start the second half, and and uh, we responded again with a great deal of, you know, resiliency, and um, you know, I so I expect that from them all the time. So that's something we've got to, you know, build on. Certainly, point to as an example of, um, you know, our build, our stick to itiveness, so to speak. You know, our resiliency I thought was good. And we still have made some mistakes. We had to clean up a couple things here yesterday, both offensively and defensively, just trying to get better, learn from it. Um, had a good workout, and then obviously we got you know IUPUI tomorrow, who coming off of a, you know their win at Ball State. Um, you know I think they're just watching them. I think they're really well coached. You know they're one, two, and three. Uh, scare you because they're guys that can you know, all of them can get 20 plus in a given night. And then um, their front court's really, really skilled. You know, the kid O'Leary is just a terrific passer. You don't see very many four fives at his size have a two to one assist to turnover ratio, and he's just a really good passer. Has the ability to score and shoot it and stretch the floor and make guys better. Um, you know, so I, you know, I really. And then um, you know, the kid Combs is obviously a, an Illinois kid who's really explosive offensively has the ability to have big nights. So it it'll be a good a good challenge for our defense again. Um, you know, locking in on you know, obviously they're they they're well balanced offensively. I think that's what makes them, you know, most difficult to guard. Questions? Well John, this is Mark. Um Jalen Coleman Lance, um, you know, the the way he scored the other day is um not what we're always used to seeing. If if you were coaching against him would that performance make you talk about him differently, think about him differently in terms of, of scouting him and preparing to play him? Has he has he expanded the way teams maybe need to consider him? Mm, you know, obviously he's he's a ter- terrific shooter, and uh, you know, fortunately for us, you know, he hasn't quite hit his stride there yet. I think when he when he you know he's going to, and when that happens, it'll certainly make us even better. Um, but the other day, I thought he took what the defense gave him, and you know, obviously he got in the paint a little bit, and he slowed the game down. And he had one time where he ran in there and tried to throw up some whirling dervish garbage that got blocked. But you know, other than that time, I thought the rest of the time he got in there, he was under control. He, you know, came to a jump stop, and they were so extended with their pressure that, you know, our, I thought our guards did a good job of, you know, for the most part there. We had a stint there in the second half where. You know, they, they blocked a few of our shots there with uh, Ali Cox, the all-time shot block leader in VCU history. But, you know, other than that, I thought we did a good job of getting in the paint, making decisions. He took what was there. He did a great job of finishing in the two-point area. And, um, you know, I, I think that's a, you know, obviously it shows a little bit of versatility uh, with his game. But I think more importantly than anything else, he just kind of took what was there. I thought our guards did a good job of getting in the lane, jump stopping, and slowing the game down. He certainly was one of those guys. John, it's Jeremy. Um, obviously, last week a, a big bounce back week for you guys. Just, I mean, just you talked about synchronization a lot, just mindset a lot. What, what did you see as the the biggest reasons for the big change from two weeks prior to the, last week? Um, just what I, you know, really what I said after the game. You know, no one pointed fingers at anybody. You know, none of us were thrilled with how we played. You know, obviously outcomes, you can't always control outcomes. You have to control the process. And I just didn't like the way we played uh, in particular. 
um, you know, in the games in New York City. Um, and so, you know, he came back and we had a day off. And like I said, we had some meetings and uh, individual meetings, group meetings, team meetings. They had a players-only meeting. They, you know, we did all those things uh, to talk about, you know, really where we're stay poised and, you know, what what are the solutions here? You know, let's let's keep it simple. Let's understand, you know, what affects how well we play, and let's get these things done and figure it out. And so, you know, everybody kind of had that disposition. You know, players, staff, support staff, and and um, so from that standpoint, you know, it was. I was happy for the guys to get to experience a little bit of uh, success from the standpoint of outcomes, but really it was a result of doing the little things a lot better, playing the right way more, moving the ball better, taking better care of the ball, uh, you know, rebounding better, like just some of those things put us in position where we, you know, had a chance to beat, you know, two two good basketball teams, and fortunately we were able to – able to take advantage of how we played. Thanks. Hey, John, this is Scott. Um, I guess with Tuesday's game being kind of the start of the last third of the non-conference season, uh, for lack of a better word, what uh, what do you need to do as a team just to use those four games you know, the best way possible just to be ready for the Big Ten play? Yeah, obviously, we want to, you know, we want to max out every day. Today's practice being, you know, first stop on the on our on our journey here that's remaining um and so it's not just the games it's the practices but I, we we need to get better you know just in a lot of areas i think certainly mindset effort was good last week but we need to do that all the time that's not a guarantee you just don't like it just doesn't happen it's, you don't wave wave a magic wand and um, i think that um you know our togetherness was good i thought we had some toughness that we can build on Defensively, you know, I still think we can be better. You know, our positioning can be better, can block out better, can guard the ball better. You know, there's some things we can do better there. Um, offensively, you know, we still had too many possessions in my mind where we, you know, over dribbled and killed ants. And, you know, I'm not real thrilled about some of those. We got to get those cleaned up. Um, and then uh, that balance of inside out, which was good last week, you know, we got to continue to have that. So, you know, we we still got a lot of a lot of room for improvement. By no means have we even come close, you know, to reaching our potential at this point. John, this is Lauren. How much of the time did you actually spend in zone and in man to man, and how did you evaluate those two separately? Yeah, they were both good. Both good um, percentage. You know, I don't have it in front of me right now, but, you know, we played probably, I don't know, I'm guessing more than probably 70-30, you know, in the game. We, we've mixed it up, um, you know, really all season. And, um, you know, it was, good, it was good for us last week. But each game's different uh, based on who you're playing and, you know, the rhythm of the game. Sometimes you got to use your instincts as to whether or not you need to change or not, change defenses or not. And it's not an exact science, but... You know, a lot of it's just, you know, the feel thing for me and and uh, the fact that we're getting a little bit better at, at those two defenses allows us to play either one. John, uh, John uh, I was just going to ask a question about Trent Frazier. Um, what, what, could you just uh, tell us a little bit about your experiences with him over the weekend? I, I know you went and saw him play and also uh, had to be exciting for him to be there when you played so well, you know, in his home state and around his people, he had to be pretty proud. Yeah, no, it was great to see him play. You know, obviously he's uh, he's really, really talented. He's, you know, he can you know, you know, break down defense. He can, you know, get a shot basically, you know, for the most part, whenever he wants. It's a real gift that he has. Great in pick and rolls, shifty, changes speeds, plays at different gears, Understands the game, has good IQ. And he's a good player. You know, the thing that probably excites me about him the most, though, is I, I don't, I don't know if I've, you know, certainly how many guys we've recruited that have. Uh, and everybody's certainly when they, you know, make a commitment to our family and are a part of our family. Uh, there's a certain level of enthusiasm and excitement and passion there, which is always neat to see, as it should be. It's you know, a special moment for us and those kids and those families. But, you know, I, I don't know if I've maybe seen the four or five, maybe my time where a kid's more excited to be a part about 
part of what we're doing and you know wants wants to put that jersey on and you know he just it's really really excited and that's that's neat to see and you know his humility and graciousness that he and his family have for the opportunity to play at Illinois you know I'd like to tell you it's like that every time in recruiting but that's not necessarily true so that that part gets me even more excited to uh to have them join our family John, uh, on the subject of recruits, do you have any late information on DeMonte Williams? No, I don't have anything at this point, you know, other than obviously he got hurt in the, in the game. You know, is is it, uh, you know, what it's been tagged as in terms of what injury it is at this point. You know, we still don't have that uh, information yet. You know, should have it sooner than later. And uh, But obviously, you know, we're hoping for the best for him. <clears throat> Yeah. Jeremy again. At the beginning uh, of the season. Yeah, one more. Uh, so here, you talked about uh, uh, kind of the your big, your strength of the team, and the Ron's production's been consistent since he came back. Are you getting what you thought, maybe just from the group as a whole? Yeah, I think we're headed in that direction. It's pretty good. You know, obviously, I uh, thought Thorne's effort the other day was as good as it's been, he's moving better. He was great on the offensive glass. He was really tuned in defensively, played with great effort, energy, and voice. You know, Morgan gave us good minutes. You know, Finky gave us good minutes. Black was obviously, from a production standpoint, terrific and gave us good minutes. You know, I, I thought those guys really had an impact on the game, in particular on the glass. Is that all for Coach? Jeremy, did you have another one there? I, I was just going to ask about Leron, and Scott kind of covered it. So, Okay. Thanks. I got one, DB. Uh, Coach, you've done really well against uh, some explosive point guards the last two games. Dennis Smith, no buckets in the second half. Lewis, three points. You're facing a, a guard that can score in Combs. What do you like out of your unit right now and how they're defending uh, good point guards? Well, I just think with guys like that, you've got to be on edge. I mean, those guys are really good. We've had we played against some good ones, as you mentioned. I mean, I thought Ray Tam Mays was good. I thought the kid from Winthrop was, was really good. You know, Dennis Smith's terrific. You know, Jaquan Lewis is really good. You know, Combs is good. You know, Thomas is good, the kid, the kid that plays point. Uh, Combs plays a little bit of combo beside him uh, tomorrow night. Like, I just think you have an awareness in scouting and have great respect and humility for how good those guys are, and you got to be on edge as a team, especially those guys that are bucket getters that have a gift to – you know, really make plays. And I think we've done a little bit better job of that, you know, with, with guys like that really post the Winthrop game. You know, I think our guys learned a, a lot. Obviously, we went – Johnson had a, you know, one of those nights that night that, you know, that that's why we always talk in terms of capability. I always tell them, you know, this is not the NBA playoffs, fellas. This isn't a four out of seven or two out of three or three out of five. I mean, it's a one-game deal. And, and in a one-game deal, we talk about capability. And uh, and obviously that's what you're talking about, Scott. Those guys have capability. I mean, in one game deal, I could hit you for 30. You know, some of those guys, Dennis Smith, Keon Johnson, Combs, you know. So our guys know that. I think they're starting to understand that better. Certainly some of it is executing technique better, but I think some of it's just being on edge as a team and being aware of who that player is and and making sure that we, we guard him collectively as a group. Is that everything? Okay, okay thank thanks, you guys. guys. So thank play, you. What time are the players available? Two, okay, 2 o'clock today at State Farm, the players will be available. Thank you. Thanks, guys.